Calipari admits, and we have the audio, he could have, in fact, been forthright about Monique not being difficult to work with. We have this and a lot more. And we have an in-depth exclusive interview with Monique and Sydney. Let me take you to some of that audio first. Here it is. If Monique asked Lionsgate for a favor and they told her no, and they asking she's asking for a favor that is not contractual, not something that they're contractually obligated to do. And they told her no, but then she went and told the world how difficult that they were. Do you think that that would be fair or unfair? No, that's not fair. It's not fair. So, no, so, so the question, so pardon, pardon me. So the question I would ask of you, good sir, because I appreciate you being honest enough to answer that with a relative quickness. I really do. So the question that I would ask you is this. If we should do unto others as we would have them do unto ourselves, the question I would ask is, how do you sit back or how would you feel if someone said about you that you were difficult to work with because you didn't want to perform for them a function that you were not contractually able or obligated to do. How would you feel about that? As, well, as I said, that's not fair. If I bring a movie, if I bring a movie to, for Monique over there, I'm going to have to say it. I'm going to have to defend it. I'm going to have to fight for it. Well, it's easy. It. It's easy because all you would be doing is telling the truth. You are six foot six black man. Come okay? on. Mo you, you, you. I, ain't got, listen, I ain't got no problem, man. I ain't got no problem. Trust me when I tell you. I ain't got no problem. Well, that's why we saying then. Then say it now. Say it now. Say it now. I'm black and I'm proud. Come on. James Brown is counting. I'm saying it now. I'm a, I'm, I will let all of this fool off when I get back out on the press tour to promote my next thing. I know it's going to come up. <laughs> that is when I will talk about it. But, 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 no, 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 it's too hot. It's too hot. Y'all, y'all eat it up. Put up the picture full, man. So let me give you a quick background, and then I'm going to go to Sydney and Monique. Put up the picture full, man. Several years ago, Rolling Out obtained a never before heard phone conversation between Monique, her husband, manager, Mr. Sidney Hicks, and Mr. Tyler Perry. Monique aired her grievances with Perry on the tape. This was a call, a conversation before the subject came up during the Club Shay Shay interview with the big homie Shannon Sharp. In the recording, Tyler Perry admits that the quote, difficult to work with brand, which has been attributed to Monique was completely unfair. The movie director also said that he would pay Monique additional money for the movie, Precious, something Monique says never happened. Perry also heard is heard admitting he believed Monique should have been paid to promote the movie Precious overseas, a point Monique has made on multiple occasions, but received harsh criticism from many. Now, today, the record gets straight again. Cindy, Monique, welcome to the show. How are you both? Hey, Brother Rashad. How you doing now? Good, good, good. But I got to tell you, I don't know where y'all coming from, but wherever y'all coming ahead into, y'all damn sure look good, all right? Just okay. for you, brother. Come to see you. <laughs> um, this was interesting. So my team and I, we reviewed the audio. There are some very telling things inside of this. It, it almost felt like a, a movie drama. Uh, there were points of understanding, points of clarity, uh, points that made you say WTF, uh, points that made you uh, root uh, for the unity that seemed as if it was definitely going to happen. And I want to be very fair and very open about this conversation. Um, so before we get into some of the recorded elements here, uh, Monique, if you would provide the background as to why this conversation happened, why you recorded it. And to my understanding, you waited a year or so before you ever released it to anyone. So talk to us about that. The backstory is, Rashad, I uh, did a joke when I did the Apollo on Mother's Day. And I said that those people, Oprah Winfrey, Tyler Perry, Lee Daniels at the time, and Lionsgate. I said that they could do some things that was uh, explicit, right? And they were the reason why I was blackballed. We get a call from Tyler Perry and 
the reason why we recorded it, Rashad, because we knew if we didn't, it would totally be my word against Tyler Perry's word. And because Tyler Perry is, I'll say, powerful, who would they believe? This powerful movie director, writer over this fat black woman, who are they going to believe? So that's why that was recorded. So while we're talking to Tyler Perry and he, you, you hear the recording and you say it sounds like it was almost when we hung up, no one was mad. No one was upset mm-hmm. because we took him at his word when he said, when my movie boo comes out, I'm going to take, you know, I'm going to take care of this. Well, that never happened. And we waited, like you said, we waited a year before we said anything because we wanted to see if that brother was going to keep his word. Let me follow up with this. In that one year, while you're waiting on the the movie, um, you know he did he did not want to disrupt the the flow of money. Uh, people patronizing the film. You all seem to be respectful of that. Uh, there's no comment, no direct communication afterwards. Was there some level of communication via text message or, or anything? Uh, Sid, and I go to you as as the manager and the manager company. Uh, was there any official communication between the Tyler Perry camp? Uh, and management or you specifically? Um, if, if I may just go back and I'll mm-hmm. definitely answer your question. Okay. In reference to what you asked initially, what spawned the call? What actually spawned the call was we had done our podcast, Monique and Sydney's Open mm-hmm. Relationship. He heard that podcast where Monique and I were discussing um, the challenges uh, that you know took place associated with the movie in conjunction with uh, the things that took place in her life. Um, he uh, reached out to some folks at the radio station and tracked my number down. So we weren't expecting his call. So when he called, that's when, and he started talking because he said he heard the, you know, the podcast, his heart went out. Um, At that moment, that's what prompted us to record it. Uh, As it relates, if we fast forward to that year in between, there were no texts, there was no commentary, there was nothing in return. And uh, I may have shot one or two like, hey, what's happening to to no reply. And um, that pretty much was it. I think most people, Monique, will understand the cause and effect of how this impacted your career. But if you could just give us the scenario from your point of view, what did Tyler Perry do? And what ripple effect did it have in Hollywood? Well, when you say that, were difficult. When you say that about a black woman in Hollywood, as we saw what happened to our sister Janet from uh, Fresh Prince, when you say that, it puts the nail in the coffin because now nobody wants to touch you. Nobody wants to work with you because you're supposed to be difficult. And my manager, husband, he's difficult. So to say, what did it do? It, it shut my career down to a place where I knew we were affected. I knew that there was a major impact on my family financially because of that rumor and lie that was told. I wanna go to this first clip. I have a few of them, we're gonna go through them sequentially. Here it is. You've not answered that question. That's a very simple question. I said to you earlier, Sydney, that that wouldn't be fair. I would think that that was fair. But what would you want to be done, sir? How would would you want it fixed, Tyler? How would you want that fixed? And how would I want what fixed? Let me tell you. Let me tell you. Let me tell you. My husband is that part of our team that he has the business conversations. I'm the part of the team that you saw May 13th on the stage. So what I would ask you is because you're talking in Tyler Perry language. I would ask you to let Monique talk to Medea. Because when you start talking in Tyler Perry language, brother, you talk like you don't get it. Right, you gotta laugh at it because you know, because you know. Let me tell you. Let me tell you, Tyler, when you, when I watch your movies, when I watch your movies, I dig Medea. And you know why I dig her? You know why I dig her, Tyler? Because she could be your mother. You know why I dig her? You know why I dig her? Because that bitch is real to her gut. 
during this part of the conversation, and I want to remind people, it was Tyler who reached out. During this point of the conversation, it seems as if he's well aware that he has some level of, you know, he's been complicit and wants to make it right. And there are recommendations that you all are making. And then you all put it on him to say, listen, Tyler, what would you want someone to do for you if this happened to you? Am I correct on the assessment so far? Absolutely. Okay. All right. Um, let me go to, and producers, we're going to go to um, clip three. And this is where um, uh, Monique uh, talks about the dynamics associated with, um, you know, with the rest of it. Here it is. And she don't give a f- how I come out. She don't give a f- how it's taken. But everybody knows she love you, but she going to tell you the real See, when you stepped away from Medea and you became Tyler Perry, the billionaire, this is the conversation you're having. Like, well, guys, what do you want me to do? What do you want me to say? See, you a brother that slept in your car. And you needed to fight for you to get you up out the goddamn car. See, your mama that you love so dearly. See, this is when I know that the, the, the powers that be and everybody saying on the radio and everybody saying on the media, oh my God, it's Oprah and Tyler. They're the ones that can employ her. Why ever would she say it? Because I love them. That's why I'm saying it. Because I'm tired of reading the stories a hundred years from now where we had to go through this. And we watch our brothers and sisters die and suffer in silence and in poverty, and we know they was right. So what I'm saying to you is, Medea, make Tyler's ass step his ass up. I'm talking to Medea right now. Medea, I need you to pull Tyler's ass in the back and say, baby, you watching this sister and you watching her family starve. You're watching it. And you're saying, what do you want me to do? Listen, don't you play with that baby like that. You know this y'all did was wrong to her. You gave them four hundred dollars to five hundred thousand dollars to charity and you know that bitch got fifty thousand dollars. Where's my pistol, Brown? Where's my pistol? Cause I need to shoot this. Now I'm not gonna kill him. I'm gonna shoot him in his ass to let him know Medea's mad as right now. Right. See that's why I'm talking to my brother. Uh Tyler Perry understood every single word of that. Uh he was <laughs> he, uh, no, listen <laughs> and, and so he he then it is interesting <laughs> Uh, he offers to write a check. And I thought this part was very interesting in the recording. Uh, here it is. So I appreciate you calling me. I do. I appreciate you calling us. But when you call me, what you going to do? I'm going to call and find out what what ever money is coming in for the precious. And I'm going to send it to you. I'm going to send it over to you. Whatever it is, I'm going to send it to you. I'm going to write you a check. I mean, seriously, where we are right now and what we're trying to do. We, we, we got some opportunities that a lot of those people didn't have. So what, what I don't want you to feel one day, not one day, is that you were mistreated or that you were treated unfairly. Now, if that means that, that I, I, that's what I need to do, then, then, then you, you do that. You do that. You take that and, you, and, 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 and take it from a place of love. Let me tell you where I'm going to take it from. Let me tell you where I'm going to take it from. I'm going to take it from its business, and I'm going to take it from my brother saying, listen, yo, this is what y'all was supposed to get. Here's what we're saying is, when you say, I don't know what it's supposed to be, but I'm going to send you the check. Listen, not charity, brother. What's not going to take place on our watch is this. I wrote a check for something that came in, and it's one of those things where you're missing the point. And we believe enough in the universe to understand that, listen, when a person come to you sincerely with understanding what it is that you're talking about versus just saying, I'm going to find out what it is and I'm going to write a check. This is the way that this is being done. It's like, don't throw us no chump change because we had to go through a movie audit with Lee for monies that he didn't get. And they're saying that he did something with the money from the movie, okay? These are the things that we had to deal with. Okay, now, uh, and I wanna say this to be fair, I have significant respect for what Tyler Perry does and the contributions that he has made generally to Atlanta and beyond during holidays, et cetera. This is not about that, this is about truth. This is about a false narrative being corrected. Uh, And here on Indisputable, we stand upon that. Now, before I go to the next clip, Sydney, I I wanna go to you because I clearly heard you step in and basically say, we we don't want a check from you. Uh, We don't want your money. 
we don't want a contribution, we want fairness. And restoring, and there was another part of the conversation where Monique talked about just restore basically what was ripped apart. Because you all can earn in Hollywood without the barrier. And you don't need a contribution, you need a significant, significant element of truth that comes to the forefront, which was once again admitted to in the conversation. So see, now I go to you first about that. What made you jump in and say, we're not, we're not going to take a contribution from you? Because what that means is we write you the check, we're good. But mm-hmm. that same barrier that was put up falsely still exists. We're not supposed to comment about the check. We supposed to not comment about anything else. You wrote us and you bought us all, and now we're quiet. The same people that we present ourselves as publicly, that's who we are privately. So um, to to have a man of his alleged stature, whatever you consider his stature to be, try to buy us off and keep things quiet, essentially, is how it felt. Uh, There's a level of astuteness to business that me being the Negro husband that people oftentimes underestimate. And for us, we we saw that coming, if you will. And just the level of integrity as it relates to money, it's not the end all the be all. We're going to be all right. That's how we looked at it. But what will make us better is your restoration of the imagery that you projected about this black woman. Monique, what did you want Tyler Perry to actually do? Because uh, obviously you didn't want a contribution either. What I said on the phone call, apologize. You put that out there publicly that I was difficult to work with. You put that out there publicly. So I need you to publicly apologize. That's it. That's all we were asking Tyler Perry for at that time. At that time. We just want you to apologize, brother. Whatever monies you were talking about from Precious, uh uh-uh. Apologize. Give me back my name. Give that back to me. I worked hard for that, Rashad. I worked hard in my career. No one ever can tell you about any any difficulties they had with Monique until this movie, Precious. No one has a story until I started saying no. That's when it became a problem. So at that time, what I wanted from Tyler Perry, Oprah Winfrey, Lee Daniels was a public apology. So, yeah, go ahead, brother. I was going to say, and you can tell the value of an apology, uh, the net worth of an apology as it relates to what it means to a person because. Tyler Perry is a man who's been known to give uh, rides on his private jet. Uh, He writes checks for homes that burn down, which is a very noble act. Tips to waitresses, $3,000, all of these things. But you mean to tell me something that you don't owe, you write a check for, a million dollars to Cicely Tyson for all the wrongs that she experienced, but a free apology. For the wrongs that you commit, you mean you cannot do that? So the importance of an apology kind of speaks to it's, it was more valuable than the check that he could have easily written. So far, um, as we you know, count the record, um, Lee Daniels has apologized uh, to Monique uh, in a very public and emotional way. Um, we've also had Charlemagne the God apologize. Actually, he's apologized multiple times. That 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 apology was not the first time he said he was wrong about what he said and how he jumped on that bandwagon. Uh, and I have to submit, people like that to me are very courageous in those moments. Uh, it's not easy to do things like that, especially positions of leadership and popularity. So now we are here. I'm going to play this um, recording. This is the final recording I'm playing on the show today. Uh, and Tyler Perry basically agrees. Here it is. The community is involved and they want to see how it's going to play out because the community is saying, wait a minute, y'all. Hold up. We don't know this sister to be no. We know she a loud mouth. We know she is say some off the wall. But what we know about it is she true to a word. 
And all I would ask you is one, que two questions. The first question is, did you not just say it was wrong? Tyler. Did you not just say it was wrong, Tyler? To say she was difficult for not doing something that she was not contractually obligated to do? Did you not say that you would feel that that was wrong? Or, or am I missing something? I, 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 I absolutely said that, yes. And I'm, I'm going to say the same thing in a minute, because I just watched your, your podcast, and it, it, really, it really broke my heart, because number one, I feel you. I feel I feel the sadness that, that's from you in all of this. And I don't want you to feel that, I mean, especially for me. I can't speak for anybody else, but for me... I, I'm not anyone that wants to hurt or offend anybody, especially you. I think you are brilliantly talented. I think you should have a lot more happening than you from that award. I thought for sure that if you had campaigned and wanted and played by their rules, what would happen is in the next deal, you would have gotten more money, millions of dollars, and your career in the film would have been much different. I believe that much in your talent. So, so in, in saying all of that, in saying all of that, I just, I just say it's just, it's just heartbreaking because I don't ever want you to think that I'm not black, trying to blackball or say anything. Uh, please give me what I say. This. I'm not trying to hurt you. I would never try to hurt you. Okay. Um, you know, I, I believe Tyler Perry is a good man who is influenced by some extremely negative things. Leadership matters in moments like this. Leadership matters. You can be good lack leadership and equate to looking bad. Um, so from that conclusion and the summary of the, of the statements that were made, Sydney, I'm going to go to you first. What did you conclude was going to happen after that conversation with Tyler Perry? Well, there's a clip that I believe y'all have that actually has him saying that when he went out on his next promotional tour for Boo, mm -hmm. That that's when he would say something in reference to uh, making it being known as it related to Monique because he was sure they would ask him. They didn't play in that one. So yep. we were under the impression that that's what he was going to do. Monique? Same thing. Yeah. But like when we hung up that call, Rashad, it wasn't, I hate you. And it mm -hmm. was okay. It was all right, brother. All right, sister. And one of the things he said, and this is where, for me, I take issue, okay? I take issue with a brother that goes to a church and lays hands on T.D. Jakes. And when he lays hand on T.D. Jakes as if he's anointed through Jesus, T.D. Jakes then does the Jesus shuffle. And then he writes T.D. Jakes a check for a million dollars. I take issue with that because when we're faced with this, as you're supposed to be this anointed man of God, but you know what you said and you know what you said you were going to do and none of that happens. See, when I start seeing things like that, Rashad, for me, that's fraudulent. That's that's it's like, what are we doing? And it's happening right before our eyes. Like for the people that's listening to this right now, they hear Tyler Perry. They hear this man saying, what I did was wrong and I'm going to make it right. They hear it. But because we get caught up oftentimes in our community, it's who the messenger is if you're going to be heard. It's, it's, it's what, is, what does it look like? Who's delivering this message? And as my husband said to me years ago, mama, it's going to catch up. Just give me a little time. Statement made is here. If Monique asked Lionsgate for a favor and they told her no, and they asking, she's asking for a favor that is not contractual, not something that they're contractually obligated to do, and they told her no, but then she went and told the world how difficult that they were, do you think that that would be fair or unfair? No, that's not fair. It's not fair. No, so, so, so the question, so pardon, pardon me, so... The question I would ask of you, good sir, because I appreciate you being honest enough to answer that with a relative quickness. I really do. So the question that I would ask you is this. If we should do unto others as we would have them do unto ourselves, the question I would ask is, how do you sit back or how would you feel if someone said about you 
that you were difficult to work with because you didn't want to perform for them a function that you were not contractually able or, or obligated to do. How would you feel about that? As, well, as I said, that's not fair. If I bring a movie, if I bring a movie to for Monique over there, I'm gonna have to say it. I'm gonna have to defend it. I'm gonna have to fight for it. Well, it's easy. It's easy because all you would be doing is telling the truth. You are six foot six black man. Come okay? on, Mo, you, you, you. I, ain't got, listen, I ain't got no problem, man. I ain't got no problem. Trust me when I tell you, I ain't got no problem. Well, that's why we saying then. The, then say it now. Say it now. Say it now. I'm black and I'm proud. Come on. James Brown is counting. I'm saying it now. I'm gonna, I'm, I will let all of this fool off when I get back out on the press tour to promote my next thing. I know it's going to come up. <laughs> That's when I will talk about it. But, 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 no, 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 no it's too hot. It's too hot. Y'all, y'all eat it up. <laughs> Basically, uh, I, I would do it when I go back out in these streets after this movie. Uh, right now, it's a little too hot. Uh, but I will go out here and clean it up. I'm paraphrasing. Uh, and that to me was that was that joyous moment I was telling you about. You, you, you're happy to, to feel and see the unity. For context, Monique, remind people what year we're talking about here. Yeah, 2016. Mm-hmm. 2016. Yes. And you waited over a year, uh, and there, there were attempts made to connect with Tyler Perry to say, okay, but, you know, a year is gone, movie, box office, all that's over with now. Um, we need you to do what you said you would do. Uh, naturally, there's this push that says, "Oh, you know, Monique is is dishonest about what Tyler Perry said he was going to do." No, she was not. And see, that has to matter somewhere. Even if you don't like a methodology of 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 how the communication went, if you don't particularly like some of the other dynamics, you can't say. But I don't like truth. That what you just heard on this show is truth. Deal with it. Deal with the truth in all aspects. So now, fast forward, we're in 2024. Have you all reconciled? Has there been a follow up conversation since 2016? Has anything happened? Has Tyler Perry called you yet? No. Then he hasn't called us yet. <laughs> wow. wow. Um, you know, and no one, and I'm asking this to be thorough. That's all. No one from the camp, no liaison. The only nobody. person that has apologized is the person that I had a contract with, and that is Lee Daniels. Yeah. That's the only person that's apologized. Not Tyler Perry, not Oprah Winfrey, no one from Lionsgate. No. And how is that not telling that the only person who apologized? was Lee Daniels, and she had a deal with him. But Mm -hmm. Oprah and Tyler are teaching seminars on resilience and forgiveness. And the only thing that they seem to be resilient at is not taking ownership of what it is that they were a part of regarding dismantling this black woman's career. You know, there's an ebb and flow in life. And sometimes we have to be very intentional about making sure we we match the universe because there's an ebb and flow of the universe. And I tell my college students this very often, um, especially my physics students. When we position ourselves in a particular leadership fashion, we think we are the, the professor, the teacher, the lecturer. But every true professor, every true teacher, every true lecturer knows this. You are a forever student because life itself is your teacher. All right. Um, at this point, it's out there. Full truth has been exposed. A lot of truth is happening. Earth is vibrating in a particular way uh, this season. A whole lot of truth coming out. So, where do, or what would you like to happen after this interview? What are you open to happening after this interview, Monique? You know, Rashad, in 2016, we said give us an apology that was free. Yeah. It's now 2024, and Tyler Perry has cost me and my family millions of dollars, tens of millions of dollars, based on his words, based on what I should have been paid for my next movie and the next thing coming up. So at this point, Rashad, yes, 
Tyler Perry, you need to not only apologize, but you need to pay for that because you admitted to it. See, it's something different. If it's just my word against his word, but you admitted to what you did was wrong. You told that the other director a lie. And you was very free in telling him that lie. So I know that it did not just stop with David Talbert. More stop. Right. It didn't start or stop with David Talbert. And Tyler Perry, oh, he really had an out with David Talbert. But he went on to tell him how difficult I was because he asked David Talbert, how was it to work with Monique? David Talbert said it was exceptional. She was a joy to work with. At that point, that was his out. Mm -hmm. But then he went behind him and said, oh, that's not the experience I had with her. She was difficult. And it was hard. So when you had your out, you didn't take it. You still went behind a man that said I was exceptional to work with to try to what, discredit me. To speak and say, oh, she's difficult. And we all know what that word means in a business called Hollywood. Yeah. Um, everything's being highlighted now where black women in particular not being paid anywhere near their value, being undervalued for decades, obviously, in the industry, women in general, black people collectively. Uh, these dynamics are industry dynamics. It's not as if the, the rich people who made billions don't have money. That's just what they say. And they're very good at calculating things in a particular way. And, and these studios are very good also at co-opting certain people to become apologists for their misbehavior. Um, I'm glad that you all are willing to come on the show, tell the truth. We will bring updates, obviously, as they come. Um, any final words to those who are watching? If you're in a situation where somebody's taking advantage of you, don't be so much afraid of speaking out about the one taking advantage of you. Be afraid of not speaking out because of the continuance of them taking advantage of you. And with that, thank you both for being on the show today. Thank, thank you, you, Brother Rashad. Thank you.